Hi everybody, it's Christine with a brand ambassador project for Graphic 45. Today's project we will be using the Graphic 45 Steampunk Spells DCE 8 inch papers and we'll be creating interactive front flip cards. This is a leveled up project so I will be using a project from 2020 volume 1 designed by Ginger Rob. Those instructions are available on the Graphic 45 website. For the first card, we're going to take Witching Hour. We're going to cut two pieces. The first is going to measure four inches by five and a quarter inches. The second piece is going to measure two and five eighths by four and three eighths of an inch. We're gonna score at one half inch. These are just like on the directions for the card. So first we're going to adhere the bigger piece to the background of the card. For the second piece, we are going to fold on the score line to create a tab. And then we are going to cut the cut apart card from Vintage Voyage. And it will be the same exact size. So if you have a little bit of a larger black border, you can go ahead and trim that off. But we're going to adhere the card to this tab section putting adhesive on this half inch tab and then lining up the card with the tab so that it'll be a little bit larger at the bottom, but that's okay. It all lines up for the rest of the card. And so now we have our piece. This will be the flip up. Before we glue this on, we're going to use our clock die and we're going to cut out of metallic gold a clock face and add this behind here just for some extra interest. Because I'm going to put the clock here, I'm actually going to put my card with my flip actually slightly down in the corner. So I'm going to position this And I'm going to start with the clock. I'm going to adhere this down, then we'll do this part. Next, we're going to cut the small card from Frightful Folly. So I've cut this piece here and we're going to place this right in the center here just to give it some extra decoration underneath our flip up. Now we want to keep this closed so I'm going to take one of my keys and I'm going to place it on the front of my card it's going to weigh the card down and I'm going to place my flowers here on the corner here as well so I'm going to first start with my flowers taking the darker orange color first and just placing this right on the edge in the corner of the card so that it is completely on the actual card front itself. I'm going to pop these up. Then I've taken the lighter orange side of the second one And then I'm going to stagger my petals 
when I glue this one down over top. So then you'll see both colors. I've taken my gears plate and I've run this through my cutting machine with some metallic gold cardstock and I'm going to cut one piece for the center of this flower and I'm going to cut this one here because it is the right size and I think it'll look good. So then I'm going to glue this right into the center of my flower. Using my Graphic 45 satin ribbon, I've cut a four inch piece off and I'm going to place this through this keyhole down at the bottom as a little extra piece. That way you can lift up on this to open up the flap. So I'm going to tie mine in a knot and just leave it like that. I may trim these ends in just a minute too. So first, just want it to be on there. And then I'm going to place my key down. And I'm going to put it up from the edge just a little bit. It's actually right where her handlebars are. And I am going to glue the entire thing down. I am using um, gel medium. Make sure that whatever you're using is strong enough to hold the metal down so that it doesn't fall off. Before moving on to the inside of the card, we want to make sure that we let this dry so that it doesn't fall off. On the inside of my card, I have placed some white paper already. It's cut to four inches by five and a quarter inches. You don't have to do this on both sides unless you want a lot of room to write messages. I am actually going to be using my cards in a mini album, so I will have photos there. So I have my white paper to make photo mats. Then we're going to cut one strip from the paper here, it is totally wicked. And what I did was I started here and I cut four of these. So it's actually five inches down and it's seven eighths of an inch wide. So just one row. And I'm going to glue these right here. But because I am using this as a photo mat, I'm only going to glue down the side so that my photo will actually tuck underneath of it. So I'm going to just add a little bit of glue right down the edge and I'm going to adhere this to the black part of the card right at the edge and none of it is going to be glued to the white part. So then my photo will slide easily behind there whenever I'm ready to place a photo in here. You could also do this if you want to send a Halloween photo to someone with a card too. You could write a message and keep a photo here too. So now we have our first card. We've got our flip up and we've got room here. If you don't like this being upside down, you can place something over it if you want to. I'm going to add a couple of gears to the front of my card. So I'm going to cut these two here and I'm going to place these maybe right here so just on the card but then hanging off here a little bit too so I'm going to add my glue mostly to this one and then to just the side and I'm going to place it here
Next, I'm going to cut these two gears and I'm going to place these just underneath of the flower here. So I'm only going to be gluing part of the large gear. And there is the card finish. So now we've just got a little bit of extra, just a little bit shiny, more metallic, just the steampunk feel. Opening the flap. And then opening the card. For the second card, we're going to cut one piece of pumpkin power to four inches by five and a quarter inches. And we're going to glue it here on the center of the card. Next, we need to cut one piece of clockworks to three inches by four inches. And then we're going to score this here at three eighths of an inch. We're not gonna do a half an inch. We want this piece to be just a little bit smaller. So unlike the instructions, we are going to have our flip out flip to the side rather than flipping up because we're going to be using this cut apart here and we want to flip out this way so that the image is right side up and because that hot air balloon image is there I don't want to cover the whole thing completely so I just cut this to three-eighths of an inch so we're going to glue our tab section here and then we're going to place our cut apart card over the section to create our flip so we're gonna line up the score line and the edge and then it'll be the same exact size. So now we have our little booklet. I'm going to add mine to the top corner, just like in the tutorial by Ginger, and it's going to flip out. But before I do that, I have cut a piece of the gears paper that I had from my first card and I'm going to place this this is for the inside and then I'm going to place one more section on the outside underneath the card so I'm going to have my card here And I'm going to place my gear here. So I'm going to actually glue the gear down first and then I will add the card on top of it. Now when I open up my card, I'm going to take this little cut apart. This is from the Frightful Folly, this section here. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to glue it up towards the top and I'm going to take the other section of gears and glue it down here towards the bottom corner. So I'm going to add those first and then I'll put my little cut apart card over top. Now, just like with the first card, I want to weight down the front of my card so it'll stay closed. So I'm going to place my key down towards the bottom. I have another piece of that black ribbon. I'm going to loop it through and tie it in a knot just like I did with the key for the first card. Now 
I'm gonna place my key at an angle and then I'm going to take some flowers from the flower assortment. I'm going to use the dark orange one first on the bottom and then I'm going to use a orangish yellow color in the center of that and then I'm going to use this little pale colored one just in the center. So I've got three layers to this flower. And I'm going to add my flower right below the propellers on that balloon. So they'll be here and then my key is gonna tuck just slightly up underneath my flower. So it'll all weigh that down to keep the card front closed. And then we want to allow that to dry before we move any of it. And just like in the first card, I'm going to add some gears. So I'm going to add one at the top here. I'm gonna add these little tiny ones here, just to give it a little bit of extra. You can add more if you wanna add more. You can always add some here as well to give it a little bit of a pop there, but I don't wanna to cover too many of my balloon pieces on the outside, so I'm going to leave mine like that. Now for the inside of my card, I do have the two plain pieces of paper on the inside like the first card since I will be using this for photos. I'm going to cut a very thin one quarter inch strip. This is from the Clockworks paper and this is just cut an eighth or uh, quarter of an inch by five and a half inch strip here that I'm going to just glue the ends. And then from Pumpkin Power, I've cut this little teeny tiny hot air balloon. I have fussy cut that, and I'm going to place that on here. I'm going to take one of my gears, and I'm going to add that behind it as well, just to give it a little bit of more color so that it will pop off the page a little bit better. So I'm going to place this and then I'll place this here. So then once I go to place a photo, it will slide right underneath it there. If you want, you can also add some decoration to this side too. What I will end up doing is once I place photos, I will probably take some more of my metallic gear paper and place some of these on my photos, but it'll be easier to do once my photos are already in. So there is our second card. For the third card for the background, we're going to cut one piece of mechanical marbles to four inches by five and a quarter inches and glue into the center of the card front. Next, we're going to cut two pieces of fancy full floral. The first piece is going to measure four and a quarter by three and a half, and I have scored this at one half inch. Then I'm gonna take a second piece that measures four and a quarter by three inches, and I'm going to place these together to form my flip front. I want both of my pieces to have this pattern on it, so I'm actually going to place my glue here, and then I'm going to place this strip on top of it.
Now I have my flip front for my card. I'm going to add adhesive to the back and place this in the center of my card base. Next, I'm going to cut this piece from Nevermore and then I'm going to cut this from Fanciful, from Frightful Folly. It was on this piece here. I just trimmed it out of the background so that it was slightly smaller because we're gonna place these both here on the front of this little flap. And then I'm also going to take some of my gears pieces, again, from the metallic paper that I cut, and I'm going to place my gears just around my cards, making sure that they're behind my cards. So before I glue my cards down, I'm going to glue my gears behind them as well. And I'm going to situate my cards slightly sideways like this and I've also cut Frightful from the top here from the Mechanical Marvels paper and I'm going to add this on top of these cards with some foam tape up here on the top. So I'm going to have my gear underneath both of these pieces and this gear over here is going to be just underneath this card. So to hold my flap down for now while I place these, I'm just gonna set this here. take some foam tape and place this here but because of how this is I want this to hang off of the edge of the card but not off the whole card so I'm only going to put foam tape on this portion of it so from the F to the F Next, I'm going to take some of the flowers from the flower assortment and layer them together. And then I'm going to add my flower here to the corner of the card. This will give it a little bit of weight to hold the card front down. On this one, I'm going to take one of my black matte pearl gems from Graphic 45 and place in the center. And then I'm going to take one of my Graphic 45 ornate metal keyholes and place it on the front of the card instead of the key. I selected this specific keyhole because it's the same exact keyhole as on this piece of paper here. So I thought that was kind of neat that it just matched everything. So I'm going to take my adhesive. Remember, you wanna make sure that you're using a strong adhesive here because this piece is heavy. We don't want it to fall off. So regular glue or double-sided tape likely will not be enough. And I'm going to place it here in the center of my card and the tip is hanging down slightly. So that will also act as a piece that we can use to flip the front piece up. So that is going to be the front part of the card. And then once that dries, we will add to the flip up piece and then we'll add to the inside. Moving on to the inside of the card. We are going to cut this piece from Frightful Folly and just place it over here off to the side. I want to be able to see the paper 
You can place it on either side, so it just depends on the look that you're going for um, or the paper that you like to see best. And then I have two of my metallic gears that I'm just going to stick on my paper as well. So you can move this around and see what you like best for your card. Just kind of depends on what look you're going for. And I think I'm going to put mine here like this. So I'm going to start with my gear and add it below the card. So now we can go ahead and close the front of our card and then we will open the entire card front. Again, just like the previous cards, I have matted my card with two pieces of white paper that measure four inches by five and a quarter inches. And then I cut this piece from Mechanical Marvels. It was just down the side of the paper here. And I cut this because I liked the little witch's brew bottle. It was about the right size that I wanted. I'm going to add this over here. That way, remember, whenever I use my cards as photo booklets, I will be able to stick my card up underneath of that, or my photo up underneath of that. So I'm only going to be adding a little tiny bit of glue down the entire left side of the paper. And I'm going to adhere this down to just the black part of the card instead of the white paper itself. If you're using these as cards, you don't have to do this. You can add your piece anywhere that you want, but I'm going to do that so that I have maximum room for my photo. So now we have our third and final card finished. So here are the three cards finished and completed. So you can see that they all match, but they're also very different when you look at them individually. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and that you will consider trying some of these cards with the Steampunk Spells collection or any of your other Graphic 45 papers. So don't forget to tag us in any of your projects to let us know what you're working on, especially if you're making these interactive front flip cards. We'd love to see your projects. Thank you for watching and have a great day.